By the time you're finished watching this video, you can go from knowing virtually nothing about editing in DaVinci Resolve to quickly and efficiently editing your first project. Welcome to Crash Course Resolve. I'm Noah. Let's dive in. Now, when you first open DaVinci Resolve, it's probably going to look a little something like this. I'd first like to draw your attention to the bottom of the screen where you see these seven tabs here. Now, these tabs are the seven different pages in Resolve, each page serving a different function and having a different set of tools for you to use. They're organized from left to right in what is generally expected to be the workflow for any given project. But in reality, you're probably gonna be jumping between them as your project goes. Let's click on over to the first tab, which is the media page. Now, this page is generally where you can make manage all of the media used in your project. If you're making simple YouTube videos, you probably don't even need to use this page. If we hop back to the edit page, you'll see that there's a media pool over here and you can add your media directly into this media pool on whichever tab you're in. But if you're working on something like a movie or a TV show or a really big project, a documentary, you may need some better organization tools for your media. And this is where you'll find it. For now, I'm just gonna take some stock footage I have saved on my hard drive and drag it into the media pool here. And now it's ready to use on the other tabs. Now the second tab is the cut tab. It looks something like this. And the third tab is the edit tab. It looks something like this. Now, when these pages were originally conceived, they were meant to go hand in hand. You were supposed to kind of start in the cut page and kind of make a rough cut of whatever video you were working on and then move to the edit page for the effects and stuff like that. But they've added so many tools and new capabilities to both pages that you can actually get through a full video in either page. It just depends on what kind of workflow you want and what kind of workflow your project needs. If you're cutting together like a vlog or something, you can come to the cut page, just start dragging your single piece of media into the page here. And then you can go through and start making cuts and getting rid of footage you don't need. It's very quick, very efficient, but it isn't as powerful as I like. And the interface is a little bit more complicated or at least a lot different than what you're used to if you're coming off of Premiere, Vegas, or Final Cut. You switch on over to the Edit tab, this looks a lot more familiar. If you're working on more complicated projects, you're probably gonna start or move to the Edit page at some point in your project. Now I am going to dive a little bit deeper into the Edit page here, but this Crash Course Resolve series is going to have deep dives into each page of Resolve resolve in the future. Be sure to hit subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when the videos come out. Now, most of the editing on the edit page is going to be done down in this region. I'm going to go ahead and resize the window so that we can see it a little bit better. As you can see, we have video tracks scaling upwards and audio tracks scaling downwards. Now, I don't actually have any audio attached to the stock footage, so let's go ahead and demonstrate. You can grab audio and just drag it into the media pool here, and now it's immediately accessible. You can also grab it from your file explorer or wherever and just drag it into the timeline. You'll see it automatically added it to the media pool here. Now I'm going to hit this mute button here to mute the track so it doesn't play over me speaking for the purposes of this video. You can, of course, layer different audio tracks if you've got dialogue and music, for example. And in fact, you can also layer video tracks. So I can drag this video down and it will appear above the video that's beneath it. And you ask, well, what's the difference then just replacing the video that it's on and keeping it a straight line? Well, if I actually come into the inspector here, and if you don't see this inspector, you got to click this button here in the top right corner. I can come to this inspector window and I can come to the zoom, for example, and I can click and drag and start to zoom out. And you can see now we have a little bit of a picture in picture effect going and also change things like the position of the clip. And if I'm ever unhappy with the changes I've made, you can come over here to the kind of undo button and it will reset those aspects for you. Even if you've moved on from the project and that's no longer part of your like undo chain for your control z or whatever you know now when it comes to the actual editing part i can scrub through the footage here and i can start hitting control b to make cuts where i want cuts to be now i'm going to come up here to the top these are all the tools you can use to edit this timeline right now we're in selection mode which lets us grab clips and drag them around i'm going to switch over to blade edit mode which is going to let me come in and make slices where i want them in the footage then once it's sliced up how i want it i can come and click on the clips i want to get rid of and i can either hit backspace to just get rid of the clip and leave it blank or i can hit the delete button to do what's called a ripple delete and a ripple delete will get rid of the space that's left by the clip that you're deleting. Now, let's say I have a clip I wanna add some special effects to. Well, Resolve has kind of its version of After Effects built into it. It's called Fusion. So let's click on over to the Fusion page, and now we will automatically be taken to this page with the clip that we had on the timeline selected, lined up, ready to go to add some effects to it. Now, Fusion uses what's called a node structure. So we've got one item here, and then it's got kind of a pipeline to go to another item over here. Now this is our media in, 
This is the input of the video that we put in there. And then there's the media out. This is what the final product will be. So if we add things in between on the pipeline here, they will affect what goes into the media out over here. For example, I'm gonna click on media one here and then come up to these different tools and I'm gonna find the transform tool. Now, if I click the transform tool, it's gonna automatically add it into the pipeline towards media out. So now once again, we have an inspector just like we had in the edit page and we can edit different things about the clip over here. Now you'll see there's two windows here kind of, one's not being utilized yet. That's because down here beneath each node, we have the viewer selection. Now, if you hover over them, you'll see that there's a left view, a right view, and an actually an open VR selection. You can actually make VR effects. I have my VR headset plugged in is why that selection is available to me. You will likely just see the two dots for the left and the right. Now, if I put media in on the left and I keep transform here on the right or the media out on the right, for example, and I come to the transform and I start editing things, you'll see that on the left, it doesn't change, but it does on the right. That's because media one is stays in our left viewer. It stays unchanged because we are not changing this tab, but the transform and the media out being on the right means that anything we change is going to be reflected. And since there's change being reflected in our media out, if we come back to the edit page, you'll see now that the clip has been shifted to the right because I shifted it to the right with the transform node here. Now you might ask what's different from using a transform node in Fusion to shift it to the right to using the inspector in the edit tab to position it to the right. The answer is control. We're not gonna dive any into animation in this video, but for example, it's much easier to animate movements and things like that in Fusion than it is on the edit page. Generally, the effects available to you on the edit page are gonna be less powerful than the same effects available to you in the Fusion page. Your workflow can be as powerful or as streamlined as you need it to be down to the individual project's needs. That's something you don't get out of Sony Vegas, that's for sure. Now the tab after Fusion is the color tab. Just like the Fusion tab, the color tab will take whatever clip you have your playhead over in the edit tab or the cut tab and immediately throw it into the color project or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to get rid of the gallery over here to give us a little bit more room to look at our page. And you can see this is a very complicated page at first. This looks like the control center for a rocket ship. Well, as it turns out, DaVinci Resolve has without a doubt the best, most powerful color grading available on the market for consumers period, full stop. Not even Final Cut, which is widely regarded as the best, most professional editing software, has the power in the color page that Resolve does. That's because Resolve was made as a color grading software, and then they just kind of added all the other cool stuff that's available over time. In fact, Resolve used to be like a Hollywood media company exclusive program that you had to pay a lot of money for. Then they made it free. <laughs> so obviously we're not gonna dive into everything going on at this page today, but I am gonna show you some quick things you can do to kind of make all the changes you need to. In fact, if you're doing really simple stuff, you can click out of nodes and click out of open effects and you can work out of just these primaries and these curves here. When I started Resolve, I had no idea what any of this stuff is. So let's just go over a couple of cool things really quick. These controls here on the primaries on this top row and this bottom row might be everything you need to make a, an image look exactly what you want it to look like. For example, I think this footage is very, very warm, you know, because it's footage of the sun. So I'm going to cool it down a little bit. So I'm going to take this temperature number here and I'm actually just going to click on it and start sliding it towards the blue, which is slowly going to bring in some of the blue back to the water and take the sunlight more from orange to a yellow color. Down here in the vector scope, you can see those changes reflected. This is actually a representation of the colors in the image. And there's several different scopes you can check in here. Now this is already some really colorful footage, but let's say I don't think it's colorful enough. So I'm gonna come down here to the sat slider. This is saturation. And I'm gonna crank that and I'm gonna give it just a big burst of color. That's beautiful. Look at that. But now I think it just has a little bit too much contrast between the darks and lights of the image. So I'm going to drag down the contrast. Now, if I click on this little rainbow button in the corner, you can see how much we've changed the image already. Now it doesn't actually look that good, but you can see you can make drastic changes with very slight tweaks here. And this is just scraping the very tip of the power that's in the color page. Now it's time to head on over to the Fairlight page. This is used for audio editing. I'm going to throw my headphones on here. Now I'm going to unmute the music we added earlier and I'm going to take you over to the mixer here and we're going to start changing what's happening to this music. If I were to hit play right now, the music would be way too loud. So let's bring it down to like negative 18 or so so you can still hear what I'm doing to it, but it's not overbearing. Now if we hit play, we'll hear the music start to play. 
And now we can come over to the EQ here and we can start messing with equalizer. Here I can do things like take the highs out of the music. And now you see we kind of get that standing outside the club feel, getting just the bass coming through. Or we can do the opposite. We can pull the bass out. And now we kind of have that kind of radio effect of just the high pass filter. Now you can get very complicated here. You can start adding compression. You can add limiters. You can add all kinds of audio effects, but that's all we're going to cover for today. The last page is the deliver tab. Now this is where you will export and actually render out your video. Now we'll talk about the best render settings and whatnot here in the future, but for right now, just make sure that you're rendering the entire timeline. If you come over here to this render settings, you can change all of the settings you're gonna use to render out your video. Quick way to do it is to jump over to the YouTube tab and then come back to the custom tab. And it will fill in all of the tabs with all of the settings you would need for a good YouTube video. And then you can just change them to your needs. I personally just change quality to best. And then when you're ready, you can just hit add to render queue. You can also specify different in and out points in your timeline here. Like you can hit I and then O and you've got like an in and out point here. And if I wanted to render just this part of the footage, I can now hit add to render queue and it will render just this part of the video. You can also schedule multiple jobs and hit render all here and it will render them in succession. So like if you had like seven different videos on one timeline, you wanted to edit for some reason, you could render them all out overnight or something. I don't know. If you learned something in this video, be sure to hit the like button. It lets YouTube know that you thought this video was valuable and it's more likely to get my video and the channel shown to more people which is always a good thing. If you have questions about DaVinci Resolve, you can visit my Twitch stream or my Discord. I'm always in both of those answering all the questions that people send my way. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode of Crash Course Resolve. All right, this is where I play survival tactics. Ah! I don't know why I keep discovering the bodies.